Money, 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 money. You gotta have it. When you need it, what do you do? If you don't have a rich uncle, call Lending Tree. With us, hundreds of banks compete for your business, so you'll get loans with competitive interest rates, and in some cases, with no closing costs. So here's the deal. If you need money, call us. Do you want to refinance your current loan? Are you 62 or older and interested in a reverse mortgage? Then call Lending Tree now. 800 634 1315. 800 634 1315. We've closed over $250 billion in loans. We know what we're doing and can help you. Call right now for a free quote. 800 634 1315. 800 634 1315. 800 634 1315. That's 800 634 1315. NMLS number 1136. The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. There is a reason, again, there is a reason that this is the most entertaining, exciting, and sometimes informative show on earth. There is an actual reason for that. And I'm excited today to be with Todd and to be with Denise and our producer, Cal Hunter, for a reason today. There are some great things we're going to talk about today that really are going to keep you awake. And I am telling you, I am apologizing in advance. I was thinking about this all morning. I have to apologize. To all of the people listening out there, this show is syndicated throughout the United States. And we are pretty much everywhere thinking, there's a few places we're not, but I apologize because we talk about California. Why is it we talk about California all the time? It's because that's the most weird things that happen in the law are in California. So I apologize in advance because there's some California stuff we're going to talk about today that you just have to look at and go... Huh? It's the trickle-down theory of craziness. It starts at the I, top, and it makes its way to other states. And we're politically <laughs> neutral here, and I just can't help it but to say, I'm, I keep saying, why are we talking about all these things? Now, we've got something going on in New York, the Weinstein we're going to talk about, and, of course, L.A. has to get involved, but... There are some stuff we're going to talk about today that's happening in California, the laws and some uh, legal actions that are going on that you just, those of you in New Jersey and in Georgia and in Kentucky and Tennessee, you just have to listen because, you know, put your feet up and get entertained because it's just craziness sometimes that's going on. It either gives you something to look forward to thinking, oh, this is coming my way in a wave or something at which you can point at California and laugh. And laugh or say <laughs> they are progressive, and I agree they're progressive. And I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on the other side of California and give them kudos. I think genuinely, at times, they are trying to do what they think is right, but they just can't help but trip over themselves sometimes. Don't you agree that sometimes they try to do what's right, but they just trip? And I'm going to, and I'm, before you yep, answer, yep. I'm going to tell I, I'm you. I'm just saying, I'm a, I agree with you. I, I'm an ag- anecdotal person. I'm going to tell you, and I don't think it started in California. It started, I think, in the United States somewhere. I have spilt more gasoline with the new gas cans than I've ever spilt before in my life. That is our anecdotal. It's anecdotal, but I'm telling you, <laughs> I don't know about the guy in the gold, 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 ooh, the Golden Globes that's going to tell me to shut up, that they don't want me to, but, but you know what? It comes down to what? Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, I, I'm still mad about the the gas cans. I cannot, for the life of me, and I know people are going, Fred, because you're an idiot, Fred. Well, maybe, what, well, maybe. Well, first off, first, what, are you, a, what are you talking what about are you with talking gas cans? About, yes. Okay, let me talk about gas cans. Gas cans used to just have a. Okay, my dad had the good old normal gas can that yep. was metal that had the rubber spout that you'd lift up. It's a two two gallon, and you'd turn the rubber spout into the thing and tip it up. I, I don't think a drop has been spilled since I was a child. Let gravity do the work. And I'm telling you, then they came with the ones that you got to push the thing in and lift it up, and poof, it goes all over the and, place. And pretend like it's a gasoline fuel pump. You have yeah. to squeeze a trigger. And not only like that, then it does. 
doesn't thing. quite fit because it's a little tiny area that you're trying to push the gas, and then it's so heavy, and then it's squirting out. Next thing I know, I got a half a gallon on the ground and a half a gallon in the in the in the tank. So and, so so, and, so and, did and you run out of gas this week? No, I didn't, but I will run out of gas because half of it's on the ground half the time of the of the leak proof, spill proof gas can. So if you follow the money, you find out that Big Oil was responsible for <laughs> maybe promoting the new gas can law because oh. they knew that. Over millions and billions of uses, a little spill here and a little spill there adds a couple million to the bottom line, right? Well, I think there's... <laughs> I'm cynical. There's that, and I believe that somebody in lawmaking capacity or on the Air Resources Board has a relative who manufactures these gas no. cans and is making a little sweetness on this. side. No, That's I know the answer, theory. Cal. I know okay. the answer. I got it. <laughs> okay. They go in there and they stand around and go, who has zero... Okay, who's lived in the city their whole life and never been on a farm Clueless, or never poured yeah. gas? Right. Anybody, any, anybody has never been out besides the box that they've lived in. Yes, that's me. We'll have you do the gas can uh, regulations. You're, you're qualified. You're qualified. <laughs> Don't go out and ask all the farm boys that have poured gas their whole life. I've, <laughs> I've, go I've, I've got a better one for how this came about. Mm-hmm. So some some guy or girl, so somebody on the either state senate or the state assembly is coming towards the end of their term, and their chief of staff comes in and says, hey, you know, I've been looking at what we've been doing the last couple of years, and you know we haven't sponsored hardly any bills. <laughs> you know, we haven't really done much except to just go around, go to, dinner, go to dinners, and, you know, live high on the hog thinking that we're state assembly. What can we do that will make it look like we are doing a lot that actually does nothing? I got an idea. Gas cans are the problem. It, it's it's a slippery so – it starts with gas cans, and the next thing you know, dogs and cats are living together. Mass hysteria. And so um, – so that's that's where it starts. You, I, I just think you, you know that you know the phrase sometimes. Look at Denise's face, by the way. You, you know you know the phrase. Uh, <laughs> She's sitting here going, "Why am I here today?" Well, the same guy also said, "What do we need gas at all for?" Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so you know the uh, what is it? Sometimes I believe that the purpose of my life is to serve as a warning to others. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just it's, everything's happened to me, so just do look at me and then do don't do what I do. I think that legislatively speaking, California might be that way. Well, we, all we I gotta say is fix the gas can others. problem. That's, we've we've gone from radio law talk all the way to my gas can problem, and I'm just and that tells me. So we apologize in advance. Today we're gonna talk about case or no case, which everybody loves, is the most important thing. We're gonna talk about California flush toilet law. And uh, there, and, and and let me tell you, I've read conservative and liberal blogs on it, and I've reviewed it, and I, so I've seen both sides. The way the conservative people are, they're they're exaggerating some claims. I'm telling you, they are. I've seen it. I'm a little, and, I'm, a, I'm a little yeah, worried yeah, about yeah. the theme of today's show yes. and the direction we're headed. So let me just, uh, for those of you keeping score, we started off Radio Law Talk talking about Fred's gas, and now we've moved to toilets. So um, it, you know, look, gas <laughs> just toilets, little, Fred. I'm curious about the direction we're headed. Go? <laughs> and Denise has not said a word. <laughs> she's not. She's been over there like, you know, if I don't say anything, I can take advantage of plausible deniability. There's only three witnesses. Witnesses that I was even there, and I can take those guys out. I think she's thinking maybe they'll go away if I just keep it zipped. <laughs> Let's take. Can we take a pause and wait for her to say something? Stop. No. Mm-hmm. Pause. Oh, I heard it. I heard the word no. I heard the I word. I said no. <laughs> just let it go. I'm not going to join this. It's like when you guys talked about farts. I mean, did I say anything in that show? No. No. <laughs> Denise is the rock of this foundation. She sees the whole foundation slipping off the edge. We are in Malibu, falling. Off the edge of the cliff right now. She takes the high road, literally sometimes talking yeah. about rooftop activities, but whatever. <laughs> we are going to talk about Man, Michael. You're, you're bringing it all, now. I'll never put that down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about Michael Jackson lawsuit is coming back. <laughs> We're going to say why. California uh, my, again. Ca- it's a California. Well, a lot of the things we talk about is Hollywood, which is based out of California. So we're sorry again. Uh, Miley Cyrus settles a copyright lawsuit. Uh, Ikea, a big lawsuit. Oh, we're going to discuss this in detail. That was so hard. Uh, yeah, but yes. it's very interesting. And um, and this might go and roll into hour two, three. We don't know. But, you know, Weinstein trial in New York. We've got to get into this trial. And a little bit about 
the little uh, antics that are happening and us as attorneys will kind of talk to you about the behind the scenes what's probably going on behind the scenes too and that's what's fun about it yeah and then what we're going to do uh when we come back we're going to do a case or no case but we've got some really exciting things call us at 855 law radio because if you want to on the case or no case that's going to happen uh the next segment you don't uh, if you want to put give your opinion Just tell Cal, he doesn't have to put you on the air, or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. And Denise, the number is 855-529-7234, or you can tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Don't forget, we're kind of crazy this morning. This is going to be an exciting one. (laughs) Cal, take us out of here before I I say something that's wrong. When we come back on Radio Law Talk, was she really the world's oldest woman? Hmm, record setter, and yet it's in case or no case. We'll talk about that right after this, right here on this show. So stay there. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. Concussion Medical Clinic knows active people run the risk of the concussion. Soccer, football, even a simple fall can lead to a brain injury. Concussion Medical Clinic can test you before you start a sports program so they can have a baseline and more quickly diagnose a concussion should one occur. They also offer expert witness services if you're involved in a concussion case, and their specialty is the treatment of concussion. So if you have suffered a concussion and want the best concussion care available, give Concussion Medical Clinic a call, 916-259-4043, 916-259-4043, Concussion Medical Clinic. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. I've got to get my car washed. This dirt, it just won't do. But I don't have no time today. I don't know what I do. Man, I know this place right down the road. Quick, quack, car wash. Uh Hop inside, let's take a ride and watch this cat and shine. Just come and see, I guarantee your ride will steal the show. Come on, quick, quack, car wash. Don't drive that dirty car. Uh Quick, quack, car wash. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, And now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. 180 over 111, and I had a stroke. 
145 over 92, and then I had a heart attack. 150 over 90, and I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure sounds like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a heart attack or stroke are far from silent. Get back on your treatment plan or talk with your doctor to create a plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. Everything's changed. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Medical Association, and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. I like that show. This is Radio Law Talk. Remember, you can call us at 855-LAW-RADIO, 855-529-7234, or tweet us at Radio Law Talk. We are only talking about general topics of law. Go to www.radiolawtalk.com. Read our disclaimers. Remember, do not use anything we say as uh, anything of substance or value. Uh, other than maybe around the dinner table or Christmas time or when you want to get your in-laws off the they say. Yes. So with that, they say that tweet works. us at radio. Tweet us at Radio Law Talk if you want to join us for case or no case, Cal. Now it's time to play case or no case. Yay! Yay! Yay. Jean Clement is a national hero in France for several reasons. One. She it was or is the Guinness record holder for the world's oldest human being, oldest human being, and uh, that's okay. Let's let it go. Carol. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to be able to grab that phone call right now. So sorry. Okay, go ahead. Call back in a minute. All right. Um, she had an apartment in rent-controlled Paris, an apartment which her attorney wanted. He came to her with a plan, a so-called viager, V-I-A-G-E-R. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. Viager transaction in which he paid her 2,500 francs, 500 bucks a month, so that when she passed, the apartment would be his. He heard she had one foot in the grave and the other was on a bunch of slippery French wine grapes, you know, that she drank a lot and ate two pounds of chocolate a week and was at death's door. <laughs> so she crafted a deal with the lawyer and the waiting game was on. Well, she did not die. Uh oh. And before you know it, the lawyer himself knocked on the pearly gates, and he was El Gonzo. But not before he paid her over the life of that Viager contract, or whatever you said, $170,000. The lawyer's family decided there must be some legal thing that they could take her up on, so they sought counsel. And I ask you, I will start with you, Denise Dirks, is this a case or no case? What? Say you. Well, French law is based on the Nepal- Napoleonic codes. Okay. So, I mean, it is very archaic, and it could very well be something like that. And what, what he was attempting to do was purchase her, buy her ownership rights that are beyond her life estate. Right. In other words, right? So right. she gets a life estate in that home, and then when she passes, he would get the remainder. Um. But if it was conditioned on him or her dying first, then it might not have had the condition precedent that was necessary for the contract to be binding Ooh, and enforceable. Getting, this is getting pretty intelligent right now. Right? I'm scared. Go ahead. So what do you think? Wow. Case or no Woo! case? <laughs> well, yeah, this is good. She is bright. Not think... just bright. She's super bright. Well, Today's the day. You know. I uh, See, I'm, I'm going to New Orleans, so I have to know that Napoleonic Code. <laughs> Napoleonic Code. Napoleonic, Napoleonic Code, code. Yes. yes. Whatever. Okay. Means you have to be a little short guy with your hand in your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I fit that bill. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say what well, feels like a scenario for sure, um, and it's kind of funny. It's probably one of those things that you would find in that book that's on your the back of your toilet. I have toilet. lots of books. Weird so, and unusual <laughs> trivia. Weird law case. cases. You're going to say case. I'm going to say case. And who prevails? I'm going to say he loses. To say the lawyer's family loses? Yes. Hmm, okay. Mr. Penny, what say you? I say we get Inspector Clouseau on it. <laughs> Inspector Clouseau? <laughs> Inspector Clouseau would figure out exactly what to do. He's on the keys. He's on the keys. <laughs> <Let me. laughs> this is going to be an interesting three hours, ladies and gentlemen. Because I don't know what we took last night, but it's rolling. All right, I, no, I, you said in a more intelligent way that I would normally say that this is a case. I, I believe this is a case. Anything coming out of like France, England, when, when Cal brings those up, those are those are cases because there's just kind of weird things that happen in Europe too, just like we're talking about California. It's a case, 
And you know what? Good for her for outliving him. And it is what it is. And the family uh, loses of the lawyer. The lawyer loses. The lawyer family loses. Okay, Mr. Kunin, what say you? Case. Or no case. Well, the, the first thing that I want to say is that Denise made reference to the word toilet in her analysis, something like, so welcome to the party. That seems to have been <laughs> the fear, theme right. for the first section. <laughs> I, I mean, this one makes me laugh because I mean, what are they going to do? Uh, you know, argue for specific performance? No, I'm sorry. You got to die. <laughs> You know, you were contractually obligated to croak. I, you know, it reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where Mr. Burns is talking to his mother <laughs> oh, no. and says, uh, says, his yes, mother, uh, so, so, sorry about pulling the plug on you and all. Uh, who knew you knew? Who knew you'd live for another three decades? <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, oh, so with man. all that, I'm going to say, yeah, I, I think this is a case, and I'm going to agree with my compadres here Aww. and say that this is a case, and the lawyer loses. Look, essentially, this was a right of first refusal. And you, you you pay for the right. He had the right. He just never had the ability to exercise it because the condition didn't happen. By the way, Denise talked about the Napoleonic Code. That's in contrast to common law. And 49 of the 50 states use common law. In the United States, New Orleans or Louisiana, Louisiana. the only one that uses the Napoleonic Code. In fact, my first year of law school, first day of law school, they had this big orientation. And the professor, the dean said, by the way, how many people want to practice in New Orleans? Three people raised their hand out of 110, and he said, talk to us. You may not be at the right spot That's because, exactly uh, right. because nothing that you're learning here is going to help you pass that bar. So really? that was very interesting. Yes. That's an interesting anecdotal thing to know. Because I, it, was, it, it was law related. I'm going to be it's honest totally with you. totally opposite. I, and and it just you go there, yeah. you look at the law, and you're like, what? This is so opposite. I am. I didn't. I'm telling you, I've been in practice about 28 years. I didn't know that. And, and it would be because... We got Louisiana as the Louisiana purchase. purchase, which we got. We bought it from France, and so that held over. That was called the Louisiana Purchase. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, okay. we've got a history. Wow. Not only not only do we learn a lot today, we're got in history. We learned about the gas cans, and then we're going to be back. And oh, we're there's, gonna, oh we're, there's one thing I didn't tell you. Oh Uh-oh. no. There was one little thing. She may not have actually been the world's oldest woman. If you can guess how old she was purported to have been, you will get an extra point. Okay. And we'll was she a point. man? No, it was a, no, it was, it was a, okay. it was a woman. No, all, right. all of that part was correct. But yeah. There's a new lady that someone just broke the record in China, like 114. So, or, 117. 117, 117 or right, China right. or in Japan. Japan, or yeah. And, and the other previous older prior to her was also in Japan. Okay. Is she, is she single? <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to hook you up on Tinder right now, Tom. All right, hey. <laughs> Swipe left. We'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> This is Radio Law Talk. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, tax doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, 
warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. I like the Amargosa Valley. You're listening to RadioLawTalk.com. And now back to your host, Frederick Penny. Hey, Todd, will you hold that up again really quick? Look at it like you were. I'm going to take a picture of what we do during the break. Todd was repairing our tape dispenser. Yes, it's leaking. It's leaking sand or whatever it is that holds it all yeah. over the place. And so I am making sure that does not yeah. happen. So he's he's... Yeah, during radio, we, we take care of things for you here. I'm, so. I'm Mr. Fix-It. I'll fix anything using utensils you can find in your own kitchen. All right, Cal, <laughs> tell us who wins Radio Law Talk. And oh, we got to guess the age. Right, Todd MacGyver Cunin. Okay, how right. old was it alleged in the Guinness Book of World Records that Jean Clement was? Let's see. Denise, you went first. You can just go first. You get an extra okay. point. If you're within five he, years. He's too busy taping. 108. Okay, Fred, what say you? 109. Todd, what say you? I'm going to go 110. Uh, 110. Yes. Okay. Well, first off, I'm sorry that none of you will get the answer correct on that one because <clears throat> the age she was alleged to be was 122. What? I know. I know. I know. I know. So what? He, so here's the fascinating alleged. story. Alleged. Yes. Jean Clement lived in an apartment with her mother. Got it. And after she died, a Russian scientist concluded that Jean Clement was actually her own daughter, meaning that her mother had died. She assumed the mother's identity oh. for two reasons. One, to avoid estate taxes, which oh. are apparently quite punitive in France, and two, to hang on to that cheap apartment, right? Oh, <laughs> so she was the daughter that became the mom after the mom died. Exactly right. So she was, in oh. effect, her own mother. That's a good estate planning kind of weird thing. Set up. Exactly. So, so, so I, how old was, how uh, was she when she had the daughter? Because it, she was probably 108. Uh, she was old. She was old, and I don't, I don't know how all that worked out. Maybe it was a granddaughter. I don't know. <laughs> well, but have, a Russian I, scientist, the family did not allow an autopsy. Mm. So upon her passing, they just said, you're going to have to figure it out. So the, it is a true story, but no case. Oh, No really? case. Yes, it was unfortunately. just a story. Yeah, she died. And she said before, when she was asked about this, after the lawyer died, she said, well, sometimes you make a good deal and sometimes you don't. <laughs> oh. So she died two years after the lawyer died. No autopsy was ever performed. So we do not know if Jean Clement was her mother or her daughter or granddaughter, but she did well. She got 180 grand out of the lawyer. Oh, she duped the lawyer. Got 180 grand out of so bravo for her. Yes, Yay. bravo for her. Yep. I got to say, home run, she That's duped amazing. the lawyer. Yeah, and no one knows how old she really was, and as it turns out, no one ever will. And that, my friend, Ooh. is case or no case. Next time... Monster Cable decides to go to war over Monster. what? We'll tell you next time on Case or No Case. Awesome. Thank you, Cal. That You're was welcome. a good Case or No Case. Hey, Thank it you. was equal. We all lost. We're all losers, but that was fun. You know what? We started to talk about this interesting law that's taking effect. Everyone thinks it's taking effect 2020. It's 2021. Uh, it is California passes a law and uh, that basically is trying to, in general, uh, I, I, this is why I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, trying to save water during the uh, drought years, okay? However, they're now trying to establish a certain amount of gallonages you can use per person in your house. Now, here's the general law. The general law is you're only allowed to use 55 gallons per day through 2025. Per person. Per person, that's correct. And then 52.5 gallons you can use through 2025, wait, from 2025 to 2030, and then 50 gallons only beginning the year 2030. Now, not only that, there's a few other things that you're not allowed to do. And I think this all comes from, you know, during the crisis where California had in 2017 of the drought, or not 2017, but before 2017, it ended in... 
2017 or 2018. I can't remember. But you can't use a hose that doesn't have an automatic shutoff. You uh, like the shutoff, you know that you can't yeah. like. And to wash your car to do anything. Anything. Well, yeah. even wash your car. Be careful. You might get shot. Um, operating a fountain without a recirculating water setup. Yes. Um, and by the way, between you and I, it's smart to do that anyway. Because you know how much you're going to pay for that water meter? That's going to be expensive. You might want to recirculate. And watering lawns during measurable late rainfall as well as a 48-hour period afterwards. So in other words, if the lawn is being watered while it's, oh, it's starting to rain and, and your automatic sprinklers goes off, you're going to be in trouble. Well, but the fine is only what? Is it 500 or 1,000? It's 1,000, it's a thousand but we're going to get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that because there's, there, there's a yeah, few yeah. things about that that are misnomers that, that people say. So, But here's the interesting one. Serving drinking water in restaurants and bars without being requested, you're going to get in trouble. Well, that's already the law here. Really? Sir, sir, yeah. drinking water? Yeah. You, you have to thought, ask for no, water. What about, yeah. okay, I, I know was, you can't I have a straw. straws. Water's straws. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, at least that's... I don't I know. I think certain yeah. counties or certain cities yeah. also do that already. Yeah. yeah, it may not be a state thing, but I know yeah. where I am. You've yeah. got to ask for I it. I think you're right, because um, the other day they brought a thimble full of water uh, for my water, and I asked, here's, here's your water. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. And then, they, by the way, they spit, they had the... Uh, the gas tank that that's spill proof and spilled water all over me with with one of those. Perfect. Washing towels and linens at hotels daily you cannot do. You know you have to give them the option the guest to use their towels again. Ew. You know I look. You said it was fifty. <laughs> well, it would be the same person using their same towel. Well, I know, towel. but still, oh, come on. Yeah. You said it was fifty-five gallons a day. A day. Yes. Per person. Now. This is yeah. Let's think about this now. This is what we're going to get into. How are you going to enforce that? That's what I want to know. Let's discuss how you enforce that. We don't have to discuss it right now, but let's think about that as we're thinking. How or eight five five Law Radio. Um, call us well, and, I, and, or eight five 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 two nine seven two three four. Our lines are clear. We can take so your call. I, I, I have yeah. I have an initial idea of how they're going to enforce what's the it. Idea? The, the, the initial idea is that the local water agency is going to require that you identify the number of occupants you have living in your house. Right. And then they will take the amount of water that you use mm-hmm. that they take on their meter, and they'll divide that on a monthly basis or a daily basis by the number of occupants. And and my guess is they'll probably average it so you can have some days that are more, some days because they have less. a meter. Because they have, they have meter. that meter and they'll do that. But listen, listen. Well, wait a minute. What if Uncle John comes over with his with his two kids? Exactly. You're going to have an issue there with people. You have you ever heard the you ever heard the phrase "Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater"? Mm-hmm. You know, the origin of that phrase is that people back in the day used to bathe like once a year or once right. a quarter and right. stuff, and they would start with the dad first, then the mom, and by the time the baby was one being washed, that water tub was nasty, and yeah. if you throw it out, you could throw the baby out. Well, consider this. Could this be a return to that? The average bathtub for holds anywhere from 40 to 80 gallons. If you have a big bathtub, you're over your limit just taking a bath. Okay? Mm-hmm. So um, what else do we have here for just water usage? Well, washing your clothes. 29 to 45 gallons per load, depending on the size of the washer that you have. Uh, you know, some of the older ones will only use five gallons, but you start looking at the things that we use water for. You flush the toilet, five gallons of water sometimes. Brush your teeth, you leave the water running, there's two gallons right there, and you're going to burn through that 55 gallons pretty darn quickly. Now, here's an interesting point. What people have don't understand, they think, okay, how are you going to monitor it, and, and, and the government's going to come after us. It's actually California's not going after the people. They're requiring the water agencies to comply, and the water agencies go against the people. I, I, I was, I was saying, I was just saying this morning. I, I got to be careful how I say it because I don't. It's not trying to be demeaning, but I'm trying to think of an analogy. But it's like, it's like I would just say it's like Hitler saying, I, I didn't do anything. Well, of course you did. It's like so the state, the state is having the water agencies be the bad guys. Follow orders. Yeah, right. be the bad guys right, and right. come out and and they're gonna and they're supposedly are going to be the ones that are going to enforce this with fines up to $500, $500 and up to maybe up to 1000 right. in some cases. Right, second day. East Bay Municipal Utilities District in the San Francisco Bay Area has done this in the past. I right. Know. Yeah. So now, here's yeah. the best part. I'm not, I want to finish my point here before I get to you, Todd. So 
Now, part of it, you cannot use water to wash off your driveway. You got a dirty driveway. You can't use water to wash it off. Not potable. Potable. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's you exactly could, if right. you, if, like, you recirculate, you can get recirculated water. water. Right. Gray water. Right. Yeah. Or you just collect the rainwater in, okay. in buckets. You can utilize that. Yeah. I'll stand up there and hold the bucket for a while and get some rainwater <laughs> and wash it off. And the second thing is, now it's coming out that California is banning the blowers, the gas blowers. So you can't gas blow off. You can't water wash off with water. You can't blow it off now with the blower. What, do I lay there and <laughs> <laughs> a broom. Dear, a broom. dear, have me the broom. <laughs> I'm going to talk about, we hitting the break. I'm going to talk about some things where I think some motivation, some people are going to actually end up making cash with this when we come back. From Ooh, break. let's figure a way to make money on this. Yeah. All right, Radio Law Talk, you can make money on things. We learn about the law. We'll be back. And what will the unintended consequences be of this California law and or policy? We'll talk about that on Radio Law Talk right after this. Could be coming to a water fountain near you. Stay tuned. Advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to prolawfirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to prolawfirms.com. That's prolawfirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to PennyLawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. If you are trying to quit drinking or doing too many drugs, listen to me. You don't know me and we'll never meet. I had a problem like you once. I drank and used to party a little too much till it got out of control and almost ruined my life. I realized I needed help to fix my problem before it totally destroyed me. If you've tried to fix your drinking and drug problem and you know you can't do it alone, you need to call the National Treatment Advisors. They'll immerse you into a 30-day program to replace your old habits with new habits and totally change your life. And if you have PPO, private health insurance, the entire program may be covered. Fix your problem right now before it gets any worse. Get clean. Call now and learn more. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. 800-296-1252. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's going to flip his shoes with two buckles. What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. 
Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. So ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose, online, with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com, lettyandcompany.com. This is Radio Law Talk with Frederick Penny. So, uh, Todd, uh, during the break, we were uh, talking about a few things. Denise, I th- uh, Todd, I want to I want to hear sure. from you about a thing. But Denise, I'm really actually impressed by what you do to try to conserve here in California. Tell us kind of how you, what you do and how you do that. That's I mean, that, well, I think it, it's great. I, it's I, my husband that does it. To be candid, yeah. every time it rains, right? Uh, he puts out five gallon buckets and he collects the rain. Um, he also has on the side of our barn um, water that comes down into the gutter right. and then it's screened and it goes into directly into a container that is all sealed like off. Like a 50-gallon drum? Yeah, I don't know if it's 50. I don't know whatever, how big whatever. it is, but it's big. And then he puts it into five-gallon buckets. We stack it up and we collect water throughout the year. And during the summer, when we need to bump up the garden or we need to bump up our plants because we have a lot of plants in right. our backyard and around the house, we use that water. And we get down to where we almost use all of it, to be candid. Wow. But the one that bothers me a little bit is he puts a five-gallon bucket in my shower. <laughs> and I have I like to the... shower with a five-gallon bucket. So all that extra water that comes off that doesn't go anywhere gets right. collected in that five-gallon bucket. Yeah. And we use that. And we actually use that for all the house plants. We don't use any other water. Okay, that now, now is just collected, reclaimed water, in essence. Now, wait a minute. I'm assuming you use soap. Uh, Do you I, use soap shower off? We're I getting use detailed. Biodegradable. So th- I was saying you're going to kill your plants or not help no. your plants. Well, no, I use biodegradable shampoos. Well, is that soap. still not going to be bad for your plants? It well, hasn't the, the, been. The, I've been doing it for years. The best thing to use the bucket for is when you go to the bathroom, just take it and pour a little bit in. You don't have to flush. You pour the water in. We might as well just go like back to the that, 1800s. Uh, you and, know, and, you my know. husband tried to make me do that, and that was where I drew the line. Yeah, yeah. okay. I ain't doing That's it enough then. of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have Chris on the telephone who has an interesting point on the financial aspect of this whole thing. Oh, Chris wants to talk about water. Chris, tell us. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. No problem. Sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, this is basically a tax. The goals are so unrealistic that nobody's going to be able – to get their water uses down that low. So the government's going to find the water company. The water company is going to find us. Um, it's basically a tax, and they got away with not having to call it a tax. Mm, that's an interesting take that's on a, it. A, yeah. I, I, I yeah. could not agree more with you there, Chris. Um, it, it is just a creative way to generate more revenue. The thing that concerns me is it's the state that is going to put this on the backs of the local water agency. Right. So it's a way for the state to generate revenue through the water agency. So it's a so you're going to pay tax that's ultimately going to go to the state, but it's got to go through the water agency to get there. And as Fred said, the state can wash their hands saying, hey, it's not our tax. That you want well, here's what's interesting. What money. Chris yeah. brings up, I think, is yeah. a, is it's a is, use tax. It's a good yeah. argument. Is it's not just that, but it's a way. It, uh, uh, I forgot what I was. Gonna say. You know, here, here's <laughs> here's something that's interesting. I don't know if you know what it takes to make a gallon of gas from crude oil, but it's a pretty intensive process. And right now, you go out there, and if you take the taxes away from gas price and look for just the cost of gas. And then you compare that to what it costs for a gallon of water. It's pretty similar. And water, you, you go through a little filtration, but you can get it right out of the sky. Yeah, but and water is a closed system, Todd. It, it, it is. We but can't recreate water. It is it is what it is. It will never be more than what it is. Well, and some people argue that there will never be – that the amount of crude oil out there is finite too. And that you'll never Absolutely. get – and that it's going to go away. But the thing with water is you can't create it, but it is a system. It goes back up and it keeps cycling. Some people feel that way with oil, that crude oil does the same thing, but they haven't proven it. Okay, So there is an endless supply of water in the sense that it keeps it keeps cycling through. But my point with all of this is – Denise, what you were talking about here with collecting water from your rain uh, gutter and, and whatnot. <laughs> I said whatnot. Thanks, Chris. Good comment. Appreciate it. 
Here's what's going to end up happening, I believe, with this. You're going to have people that are going to end up putting huge cisterns underground in their backyard or building water towers. The reason New York has water towers to keep the water pressure right. up so that things can happen. People are going to put it there, and you're going to have some smart guy on the block become the water baron for the neighborhood because if you want to wash your car, you go over to Fred's house. Fred's probably the one that's going to do this. Yeah, of course I He'll am. have 15,000 gallons of spare water with a high-pressure hose. You can go and wash your car all you want. This isn't state water. I collected this out of the sky. I think it's and, smart and because his gonna, cows can drink it. And My he's going to make and he's going to make money doing that right. because water will now become a commodity. It well, wait a minute. It already is. It's already is a commodity. It's the biggest fight in the uh, in the whole world is over yeah. water. Portable but water, um, yes. creative incentives for water suppliers to recycle water. That yeah. reminded me that we actually have a sponsor that does that. Quick quack Quick, car wash. That's true. And so they, they're going to find ways, the state will find ways to give money back or some kind of an incentive for people to recycle water in their business it's and smart be creative it. about it. Okay, yeah. sorry, Todd. I know sure, you want to. Sure, sure, but sure. I, you just remind me what I wanted to say was it, it's what they're going to do, is, and what Chris brought up is how the government is using this as a use tax, basically. They're not, I, I just, they're not going to hit Ma and Pa in their house. They're going to hit the businesses that are overusing. You watch. That's what they're going to go after first is the businesses. Well, hopefully not the farmers. Well, yeah. I think the farmers sure. are going to win. Yeah. Farmers are going to are, – They. I think farmers are going to be protected. By the way, I, I have ranches and I, I have a cattle ranch, and I love my cows and I love my ranch. And, and, and we during the drought in California, I, people are like, why is your, why is your pastures green? Because i got to feed the cows. What am I going to do? Well, go buy some hay. What do you think? How do they get the hay? They have to use water. You know, so it's like, I, anyway. That's I, just... I, th I think what they're going to do is they're going to end up uh, offering extended use credits, licenses for for car washes, farmers to exceed the daily limits so that they can run their business. That's going to make it more to get your car washed. It's going to drive the price up, but it's also going to make car washes a, a viable business because that's the only place you can go to get your car washed. You can't wash it in your house. The concern that I have here is, I don't know if you... Folks here, we understand the word riparian law. It's the it's the water use law, and and basically the way I understand it is, once rainwater, once it makes it to a stream, a river, a body of water that flows, heavily regulated by the state, you can't just pop a hose in there and start pumping it out. If they find out you're doing that, you get into trouble. But there's not a lot of regulation, if any, about Water usage, you're tapping into water from the time it leaves the cloud until the time it gets to that body of water. Oh, but there is. And in I'm, Oregon, that water belonged to the state. You could not just gather it off your roof or anything. Really? Yes, absolutely. And, and I don't know if they've changed it or not, but that's been the law in Oregon for years. And, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. that is my concern with California is that that is that if people start putting these cisterns in, if they start doing this kind of stuff to collect the water to become the, the neighborhood water, water barrier, barren, the rainwater, or even... Then our water tables are going to suffer greatly. Or even creating a system in your house whereby the water goes from potable to gray to black, depending on the usage, recycling your own usage in your own house. Uh, that the state is going to step in and start regulating that to prevent people. It's it's going to become so regulated. It's just going to be a nightmare, I believe. Well, we'll see. There's always adverse consequences to any good idea. Now, you know, yeah, and they and yeah. California thinks this is a good idea because they think they can help um, stop another huge drought. Because people, I don't think most people across the United States really understand how bad the drought was in California. Well, let me tell you the problem. It's a simple yeah. problem. We, we're not going to get into politics, but there's more people moving into California and you're storing and less. And no new storage. There's no right. new storage. Exactly. I don't, yeah, yeah. Politics aside, yeah. it's a simple fact. More people building, more people coming in, no new water storage or or at least figuring out desalinization or something. California, you better do something. People are moving in here. Same with Las Vegas. Same with Nevada. That's a desert. So water is gold. Let me tell you, I got to say this one. So I was, uh, when I first was uh, had a ranch, I have a, uh, a place that I have a ranch, and we have water rights, and, and it's a long story, and I've got a good water rights. And I remember my water master walking, to, walking with me. This is probably... I don't know, 18, 20, 20 years ago. And he looks at the ditch, and he sees my pipe coming in, and he says, Fred, see that? I said, yeah. He goes, liquid gold. Liquid 
gold. He repeated it twice. Liquid gold. And I said, huh. And I didn't get it. And as time goes on, as the drought came, liquid gold. They come to me, Mr. Penny, you want to give up some of your water rights? No, I'm keeping all those water rights because uh, that's valuable in California and other states. We're going to be back the second hour. We're going to talk more about the law. Stay tuned because Radio Law Talk is not done. There are three hours every week starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time every Saturday. You can join us on your favorite radio station and, of course, on RadioLawTalk.com. Stay tuned. We'll be back. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated. Changing the world one life at a time. I'm loving my balance of nature. Since I started, I have not gotten one cold. I kind of fight everything. I get a little tickled, but it goes away. It's just uh, amazing the difference I felt. I want you to know how much I appreciate the uh, counseling and so forth and your attention to your people. I have been a pretty big advocate for the balance of nature. I don't know how many truck drivers have asked me how in the heck do you keep going at 88, 89 years old? I said, balance of nature. <laughs> if they want to really enjoy some good health, get on balance of nature. Experience the balance of nature difference for yourself. For a limited time, you can receive a 30% discount and free shipping on your first preferred order of balance of nature. Call 800-2468-751 or go to balanceofnature.com and use discount code USA.